Yes. Uh, Michael Waldron. Michael Waldron, yes. Uh, uh, he is challenging uh, Congressman Charles Rangel for that congressional seat. Yes. Now, that being said, included in that challenge is up on the hill, you have a brother named uh, Espelate. Uh, uh, Senator Adriano Espelate. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll get him down here too one Thursday morning. And, uh, and uh, he's the third candidate running for that same seat. Now, he ran last season and lost by a few thousand votes, uh, or maybe just a thousand uh, votes. Uh, uh, less than a thousand. Yeah, you see. So now I, I see how this is shaping up. Uh, and I'm afraid, uh, and this is just an exercise in uh, 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 sociology or a <laughs> civics lesson, I guess, uh, that if you have three candidates running for one seat and two of them are identified as one thing, that makes it kind of almost easier for the third candidate who doesn't identify with either one of them mm. to get in. What, what, what is it just... From, from a professional point of view, without you know being well, opinionated. Well, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit slight of the civic and say let's do math. Okay. Now in school, for me to understand certain math problems, they would take the pie and they would cut the pie. Right. And when they slice the pie, you have it in fours. Okay. So if there are three, there's only one one solid slice that's there so oh, i'm sorry there are three and they're pulling from that one pie yeah so that's three and a quarter three and a quarter three and a quarter and whoever gets the other crumb wins so i i think in in essence this this election is going to be one that's going to be watched not just from a local level but yeah, I think on a national level yeah. um and i think it says to to the people of new york city to the residents of the bronx and harlem um the heights um it's it's get on your grind and for I, whoever you're going for. For whomever. Yeah, you, vote. Just get out there and vote. You you can't pontificate your way yeah. through this one. You've yeah. got to be an actual <laughs> actual active active participant in the process. If not, then you can't call up and say, Well, brother Bill, you know what yeah, I no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. That's Monday morning quarterback yeah. and game's over. How about uh, uh, when we look at the uh, uh progressive posture? I don't know if you saw it or not. I, 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 at the 116th Street tragedy, that photo op that was that was created, when you had De, Mayor De Blasio marching across 116th Street with all of his minions, up to and including Inez Dickens and uh, Police Commissioner Bratton and Fry. And they all just marched triumphantly across 116th Street to the press conference. Mm -hmm. It bowed a vision of a third world country with the great white father coming to rescue the poor people that were under tragedy that wow. morning. If you, you didn't see it, but if you had seen it, you, 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 you'd have felt that same. I'm seeing us move in a particular direction uh, that's not making me uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but... Take, take, help me. Brother Bell, <laughs> no, I, I didn't see that. But mm -hmm. one of the things that you guys didn't see either were um, the clergy that were there. The next day. Uh, the, no, no, The no. same day, yeah. yeah. We, we were there prior. Okay. We, we were there. We left here one Thursday yeah. morning, and we went directly there the first right. Thursday That's after right. the event. And we were under the trussle uh, on Park Avenue, adjacent to where the excavation was going on. Uh -huh. And we were praying, and there was no press, and we were praying. Did I mention there was no press? Yeah. And directly across from us were the firefighters, and they had identified at that point the uh -huh. eighth body. Okay. And they asked us if we would kind of speed it up a little bit so they can go ahead and, and do the excavation of yeah. that eighth victim. Yeah. And I say that to say that people will march and they will give you photo opportunities, but I think it's incumbent upon us individuals to do our civic duty and our godly duty yes. to, to pray on behalf First. and then if, if we're there so when 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 you are anchored in who you know yeah. and whose yeah. you are yeah. you'll see all types of things that look good sound good but you have to know where god has positioned you and okay. for what and I'm, i just want to say this 
we occasionally give away food, but I'm to the point, and I, I challenge my congregation, I challenge anybody, when you go to the supermarket, you get two extra cans of whatever you're buying, yeah. and you put them on the church doorstep. You bring them to your church. People, We don't want that on the altar. No, we need to feed our community and stop waiting for someone else to come in and give us something. Yeah. It's time to man up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just yeah. had no, to go I got there. You, you got you. Because, yeah. because when I'm looking at that progressive group, I mean, yeah, it, that, it, looks, right. it looks good, but we've always taken care of our own. That's right. In the midst of devastation, there's right. always a church. When I was in Haiti and I was listening to this noise at 5 in the morning, I said, well, what's going on, Brother Bill? Yeah. Are they going to attack us? Yeah. They said, no, man. Those people were praising. Pray, pray, man, yeah. they were praising and worshiping like they had just fell into a palace of gold. Okay. And we have everything and won't even and get up. And won't, yeah. Yeah. So that, 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 that's, you, you, you got it uh, on one accord. You, you, you heard where I was going and <laughs> took it to the next level. Good. <laughs> We got our brother Anton but, over there. <laughs> but yeah, because you see, you see, you see, uh, like you said now, you, you, how did that giveaway go when you did? It went quick. It, it went faster than I had imagined. Uh -huh. I, um, we ended up with 190 bags of groceries, and the giveaway was supposed to, the distribution was supposed to start at 11 a.m., uh -huh. but I'll tell you, and I apologize to the listeners that got there at 11 o'clock because the senior citizens that I saw outside of our door, um, my heart would not let me wait to 11 yeah, o'clock yeah, before yeah, I give yeah, them yeah, something. Yeah. So it was gone by 1130. We wow. didn't have anything at 1130. Wow. Um, we're in conversation to bring the truck back in um in the month of August, we just uh -huh. don't know what the date is right now. Um, they'll tell us about a week out, and we may have anything from 200 to 400. We don't know till the truck arrives. Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah, uh, program, and it's 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 a great help. Uh, I know that uh, Reverend Mack up in the Bronx uh, on 63rd Street and Third Avenue, uh, uh, Church in the Hill, or anyway, anyway, there. Uh, <laughs> they give out food as well, and it's it's an I'm always amazed, and shouldn't be, but I am, when I see how long the lines are mm -hmm. in this era of prosperity, allegedly. There, uh, why, 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 in your opinion, having been on the giveaway side of this thing, with, I think we're being deceived. I, I think we're being deceived into thinking that everything is all right. Uh, when, when you look at those lines, as I go about the city, uh, the lines in front of these churches and institutions are phenomenal. Yep. So, so if everything is all right, for who? Ah. Uh, for who? Okay. For whom? I'm sorry. I, I yeah, have, I know. I have. I I'm have, preposition challenging. I have well, a yeah. half a degree somewhere yeah. around here. Um, <laughs> for whom? And and if your observation is what ours is, ninety eight percent of the time they're seniors. Yeah. Um mostly females and the line is starting to get a little younger yes but those people i think are the disenfranchised mm -hmm. um they're they're on fixed incomes and sometimes the system that wants to give you and, and i appreciate everybody that gives there's so many criterias to even get that food like okay. you have to have uh, identification for each person and yeah. the, you know yeah, mother yeah. may i yes you yeah. can advance no you can't and i think when it comes down to giving away basic just stuff it. as food, just, just give it give it yeah just yeah. give it and, and we don't ask for anything and someone says well they got two bags and they must have needed two bags <laughs> they must have needed it yeah <laughs> they must have needed it you know what i'm saying and even you know, at the front, you know, uh, my 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 godmother, mm -hmm. the uh, late Reverend Stella Mack, uh, uh, she said, "Don't worry about giving people something. What they're gonna go do with it? Don't worry about what they're gonna do with it. Just give it. Give it. Exactly. If God made a way for exactly. you to give it, yeah. just give it. Give it. You see, and if they take it down the block and sell that, it, that that, 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 that that's not on you. you. That's, that's between them and God. That's right. That's right. That's the key." Yeah, that's the key. You see, that's between them and God. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, the folks run up to us in the street, your brother can have a dollar. And I, I, I know, well, <laughs> I know where highly, he's going. Highly suspect. <laughs> highly suspect, thank you, where he's going. But but I encounter people that that's out there that's really hungry. Yeah. And those who... How do you differentiate between the uh, one that's begging money to go get a hit opposed to one that legitimately needs it? Because How do you determine? I'm, because I watch, I watch every time I go to work. I see the person out there begging. I see them actually taking a change and actually going to get something to eat. Okay. And I see somebody who takes the change 
and five minutes later he's asking more people for more change mm. so there's different things like the you behavior just, yeah you you just have to watch you could i've had one fella i said come with me let's go in here and let me let me, let me buy you a breakfast, breakfast. Yeah. Mm. didn't want it didn't nope want. Now, ah, uh, that's a tell. That's a tell right there. If, 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 I can't, if I can't buy this meal for you, then, you know, I can't give you any money. But that's, that's discernment. See, see, preach that. But, see. But, to, but to piggyback off what you say, yeah, yeah. you should give. Yeah. There's people out there that's just trying to stop the fact of giving. Oh, no, don't give it to him. He's going to do it. That's none of your business. That's not your business. Do. That's true. You just give from the heart. You give. You don't keep spares. You give. Sure, like, sure. You know what I mean? You be kind-hearted. Whatever he does with it. That's between them. God saw you gave for the right reason. And God will bless you. And what you you know, and what you do, it'll come back. It'll come back to you. uh, You know, twofold. This this young man that you guys are listening to, um, brother Anton, is um, is a great guy. And when I got a call that we had three hundred bags of groceries in um, Pennsylvania Uh and we needed to come get them, I was like, okay. I couldn't find a U-Haul van, (laughs) so we did the hookup. (laughs) We rented a. Uh, a Yukon truck okay. with a hitch and drove it into the Bronx and put a trailer to it. Okay. And then we drove down to Pennsylvania. Ain't we creative? <laughs> <laughs> we hey, be hey, creative. We be making it. <laughs> <laughs> we made it Make a way out of no way. <laughs> and this uh, brother in a suit and tie, right? Uh, uh, I saw him passing by. I was like, brother, I need you now. Cause, uh, I mean, I'm gassed up. I got the hitch. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I don't have any help. Yeah. And, and brother Anton. Um, from Tabernacle of Deliverance okay. yes. yeah. for all people, mm-hmm. all people was like I got you pastor and and I bring that up to say that you don't know how much you can be a blessing with what little and two infused that you have just right. make right. yourself available little becomes much if you put yeah. it in just, God's hand just, man <laughs> my back thanked this brother because we had I'm to turn sure. around and drive back to yes, New York yeah, with those yeah, 300 yeah, bags yeah, of groceries yeah, yeah. and then get them into the uh, Polo Ground <laughs> Community Center <laughs> That was an effort. That was a. I <laughs> see that uh, uh, you have a, uh, a meeting down at the rent control. Uh, yeah, the bo- uh, guideline give, give us a uh, foretaste of where that's headed now, because um, uh, uh, affordable rent is a dinosaur uh, in in our neighborhood. Well, no, brother Bill, affordable rent is a real thing. For the whom? question is for whom? For whom? I think that's yeah. the word of the day. For whom? <laughs> for whom? Tell your neighbor for whom? Yeah, yeah. Turn to somebody <laughs> and say for, for whom? whom? Yeah. The Lord <laughs> Jesus. That's gonna be the crazy. What that yeah. man say? The rent too doggone high. Yeah, I know he yeah. said it a different yeah, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But but ideally the you know and I don't mean to make jest of it but there there are folks that have moved into our community and their income level is different and they're they're bridging our income if I got this right on some of the monies that they're making in Westchester and they're saying what the medium income come in Harlem doesn't look like what you and I are making but because of the fact that, 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 that see what the average Harlem South Bronx mm. Brooklyn Spike is out there on a limb with that whole yeah thing, you know, uh, Spike Lee uh, good morning Spike Lee uh, <laughs> uh, the, the problem is that your rent that you're paying on the lower east side mm-hmm. you couldn't afford to pay it mm-hmm. because it was too much mm-hmm. but now the rent in Harlem is Where? affordable to you, Where? but not affordable to those of us who are living in Harlem. Now that and that's answers, the plan. Now that speaks to why we see who we see on the lines for food, and they're telling you that life is better. And it is, but for, for whom? whom? For whom? That's right. That's right. The struggle. And continues. when I see when I see uh, the newcomers, as I call them. Uh, walking the streets of our now, welcome. Glad to have you here because, see, with that comes better sanitation, quality of life, and and all that quality of life stuff improves mm-hmm. because those police them <laughs> don't want to see nothing happen to the folks that look like them. You see, now that us against them mentality, I mean, flag that forty four minutes past the hour, uh, 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 will change their way of policing. Because they can't treat their own. Well, no, they won't treat mm-hmm. their own the way they treat us. And, and, and that, that's our saving grace. And, and reality is the, the community is changing, has changed. And we, we are always agreeable and we welcome change. Sure. I, I just think that. Look how, look how welcome the Indians were. Oh. <laughs> 
I mean, we can go on with the I digress. With the, with the Aztecs. I mean, we can just keep this thing going here. And those, and them, 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 them damn blankets they brought over here. Oh, but thank God for Jesus. Yeah. The sauce, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if it had not been for yeah. the Lord on my side. Yeah. Huh. The stomp goes right there. But go ahead. Finish um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to depart. I thank you yeah. this morning. I've got to run down to the Rent Guidelines Board. There's going to be a protest uh, demonstration um, in anticipation for the increases that seem to mount up every yeah. year, um, whether it's 6% or whatever it is for a single, um, a one-year lease or two-year lease. Without work being done on the property. Right. Now, that's the um, MC, uh, Major Capital Improvement. But let me, MCI, uh-huh. let me give you this for our listeners. When you are renewing your leases, folks, look to see on the lease, whether it's a one-year or two-year lease, look to see your security deposit. Uh-huh. Because the security deposit will always match what the current rent is. So, for example, if you moved in in 1965 and your yeah. security was $85, right? Now you're paying $900 a month rent. Right. Somewhere in the transformation of management and changing property owners, your your deposit has to always be consistent. Really? Yes. And most people don't know you that. Have a, you have a Wait. You just blew my mind now. If when I got this apartment, I had to put down a month's rent, month's security, mm-hmm. that's $2,000, let's say. Right. And your rent is $1,000. Right. So that $2,000 that you put on at least inception should increase, not just from the interest, mm-hmm. but it should increase. With the with the rising of, of the, the, rent. the rent. So, for example, oh. that 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 $1,000, that security deposit, it shows you have a security deposit, and all our security deposits are supposed to be maintained with an interest-bearing account. Right. So now when you look, you may have $1,002, but now you're paying $1,008 for your rent. Right. You are now responsible for the difference between the $2 and the $8, so you would have to add another $6 toward your security You, deposit. the tenant. The tenant. Okay. Much but if sense. you don't, it's going to remain that. Well, no, they're going to come after you. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> But that's the new thing. They're looking oh, at it to make sure oh, that God. you're paying. Reverend Al Taylor, thank you as always. And uh, we're going to see you as well on the 24th of yes, May. That's yes. right. That's uh, right. You're going to be there because yes. you belong to Tabernacle. Don't give it to me. Get him. That's I'm, right. I'm going to be there. WHCR 90.3 FM radio personality. Brother Bill on, the, on his 15th anniversary 15th. at 3.30 p.m. May 24th, 2014. May 24th. Mark it. Write it down. Put, put some pin. gravy yeah, on it. Put, put some chicken grease on it yeah. right there. Uh-huh. Okay. And we're calling pastors, preachers, ministers, choirs, groups, individuals, artists, families. And friends, you know all y'all say, hey, Brother Bill, good morning. How you doing? I want y'all in the place. If you're not in the place, you're in the wrong place. That's right, because there ain't no place like <laughs> that place. <laughs> ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. What? Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Praise Thank God. Thank you for being with us this morning. And uh, I see he's warmed up from having been out there in the cold. Yeah, he, re- he ready to he ready <laughs> take a text now, I see. <laughs> it was, it was kind of cold, but we are. Right. Listen, somebody always says that uh, it well, it ain't as hot as it's going to be if you end up in hell. Well, I don't know about that neither, but I know cold. That I know, right? I know for cold, sure. I don't appreciate we it. Want right? I'm right here on the 3G Experience, I want to thank our guests for being in, as always. And uh, as we move through our Lenten period, understanding we're celebrating the two things when he died for our redemption and that he did arise, yeah, please, uh, arose from the dead. Okay, and and these these are the things that we keep in our heart, in our mind, as we move on uh, from one good degree to the next. Let me quickly, uh, 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 you see, our union in Christ and our participation in his divinity provide us with the resources we need to live godly lives. This is not to say that we become gods. Instead, we are confident we have the living God within us. We talked about the uh, confrontation, the conversation, the penetration. You have God within you, okay? And uh, Peter is careful to note that as Christians, we must give all due diligence or do our part too. We cannot be slack or competent about our faith walk. We must persevere and make every effort to perfect our relationship with God. Our spiritual development is an ongoing process during which there is constant growth, shaping and refining. Think about this. The idea of planting seeds in a garden and then failing to tend to them is ludicrous, as Mike would say. Left unattended, the seeds will dry up and die. 
or the seeds will sprout, but the tiny plants will be overtaken by weeds and strangled. Equally ludicrous is the idea that our faith left unattended. Our faith left unattended will grow, like the neglected flower seeds, the old habits of our former sinful nature will arise and quickly take hold of our lives. So therefore, our faith, our faith, our faith is like that seed. Faith is what brings us to Christ in the first place. Now that we've become part of him, we want our faith to blossom and grow so that we can reflect the very character traits of Jesus. Just as plant seeds need watering, our faith needs nurturing in the Christ-like characteristics that Peter lists in verses 5 to 7 of Second Peter, first chapter, of course. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. Peter's emphasis on knowledge is especially important because a great portion of this epistle addresses the false teaching that was undermining the church during this period. Peter understood that the only protection the believers had against the false doctrines cropping up was knowledge. And this is what you have to have. You have to have, not only is knowledge critical to Christian maturity, and to the development of a godly lifestyle. It is, as Paul claims, our sword of the spirit and an integral weapon in spiritual warfare. And that's where we are this morning. And here endeth the lesson. As we think about this season, this whole Lenten thing, this whole season that we're moving into now, we've acknowledged the fact that we're going to go from the cradle to Capernaum to the cross, celebrating the fact that he died for our redemption. Understand that, 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 that he, who, he who had no sin became sin and took our sins. Understand that. You understand the God's unity, God's triumph, human depravity. Okay, and we were morally bad, and that's why Christ had to come. We talk about the science of soteriology, which is the science of salvation, which is why Jesus came. And of course, his atoning death, his bodily resurrection, his bodily resurrection, his intercession on our behalf, the second coming. These are all things that we need to pay strict attention to, especially if never before during these times that we live in, then of course the ascension, which will come 50 days after the resurrection. Be thankful, be grateful, think of all the good things that God has done through his son. Think about the agony of the cross and how he died so that we could continue to live as we live. Now I need you to just stop what you're doing right now. Whatever you're doing right now, I need you to stop. And think about the goodness of God. Think about how good God has been to you. Now, don't ask for nothing. Why don't you try today to don't ask for anything? Instead, just tell the Lord, thank you. Say thank you for all that he's done for you. After all, we talk about the miracles Morning by morning, new mercies I see. That's right. You woke up this morning. That's the first miracle of the day. Understand this, that you had to be alive to hear the alarm clock. You had to be alive to hear the alarm clock didn't wake you up. If you, if you had already crossed over, you would, uh, you would have had a new home over in glory, we hope. Okay, so tell the Lord thank you as you start this new day. Don't you leave your house. You don't know what's on the other side of that door. Give me just five minutes and it could change your entire life, if not your day. Tell the Lord thank you. Look around you, whether you're in a furnished room or a multi-room mansion. Tell the Lord thank you. Thank you for that little piece of bread you had to eat this morning or that steak and whatever it is you had to eat this morning. Tell the Lord thank you for that. Look at your children and before look at your children as they prepare to leave this morning. Give them a special hug. They need your love. They need to feel warmth when they leave their home to go out to these mean streets and your partner. Huh. Don't you leave your house in anger. Even if you're right. 
Don't leave your house in anger. Don't leave your house. I ain't speaking. Don't leave your house without speaking. Can you understand, beloved, how many people every day leave their house and never return? Could you imagine the agony? Could you imagine how you'd feel for the rest of your life if you and your partner are going through one of those things that we and our partners go through from time to time and you go through that I'm not speaking number and one of you should meet the death angel as you go about your day. And you'll stand up there in the funeral home and, oh, I wish I'd told him I loved him. Mm. I wish I told her how, mm, well, you have an opportunity right now, 55 minutes past the hour. No matter what the situation is, you ain't right and he ain't right and either, either one of you are right. <laughs> if you want to look at it, call Dr. Jeff. He'll tell you both of y'all are wrong. Good morning, Dr. Jeff Gardier. Think of his goodness to you as you start this new day. Turn your head into the locks of your shoulders and shoulders and tell the Lord thank you for all that he's done for you. And join us, would you? Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Whatever you're doing right now, just stop. To God be the glory for all the things he's done. We deserve to give him glory, honor, and praise. And don't you owe God a shout this morning. Don't you owe God a shout. I know you do. Turn your head to the locks of your shoulders and just... Sit there, lay there, stand there. I don't care. Just, just don't move. Don't, 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 don't move. Just stand right there and join us at this most solemn moment.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the precious Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Feel the power of the living God as His Spirit moves over, under, around, and through you, Lord, have mercy. Thank you. Now, 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 stay right there, stay right there, stay right there, don't move, stay right there. We got a text a little while ago from, uh, uh, Lincoln Hospital where one of our listeners has just had to take their, you see, their loved one to Lincoln. So would you, would you, would you do this for me? Would you just turn toward Lincoln Hospital and just stay in that prayerful mode if you would and just stay right there and lift up that family that's in Lincoln oh the the, the child had an asthma attack or something this morning they're in the hospital with their child this morning you see you see you see how things happen so quickly in a twinkling of an eye something changed that's the devil working on you understand but we we as prayer people we as power people know that if we all collectively put our thoughts and prayers in the direction of, as they say, the Lincoln, and pray that God's will be done, everything will be all right. Stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. concept under which we operate is called substantial atonement. I once was blind, but now I see. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting. And the King of glory shall come. Who is the King of glory? <laughs> Somebody asks, who is it? Because the Lord, the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the King. And to God be the glory all the things he's done and whatever your situation is this morning whether you're in hospital or whether you're in jail on your way to jail in court this morning somebody out there this morning has something real real bad they've got to face and 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 we need to think about that and be thankful and be grateful and give thanks let's go to our phones let's open before we go to my guest this morning uh Yeah, I'm gonna push this. Uh, I hope y'all are mine. You do one of the hymns of the church. 
Come on, y'all. By hope. By hope. Uh huh. It's built. It's built. On nothing. On nothing. Hallelujah. Faithless. In Jesus' blood. Phones are open 212-650-6903. Let me hear from you this morning. I dare not trust. I dare not trust. The sweetest. Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, my brother. This is Barbara Vanderpool calling. How you doing today? I'm just fine, my sister. That's great. I hear you got a big day coming up on May 28th, I think it is. May 24th. May 24th. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And this is where? Tabernacle of Deliverance. Tabernacle, I should have known. That's Tabernacle right. and Deliverance. Be over there with you to tear down the house. Look forward to seeing you, my yes, sister. Yes, be blessed. And Thank thanks you. again for all your work. God bless your heart. All right, bye bye. Okay. Two one two six five zero six nine zero three. Gets kind of churchy in here sometimes, preacher. <laughs> Good morning, you're on the air. Oh, praise the Lord, Mr. Brother Bill, sir. Yes, ma'am. Listen, I said that you got a great day coming up May 24th, but you got an even greater day coming up in five days. Your birthday, April the 4th. Thank you for remembering that, my that's sister. That's right, that's right, because I love you, and you're going to have a birthday. You're going to be 75, and you look real <laughs> good for 75, and you get along, you get around real good, and you articulate really wonderful. God has really preserved you wonderful. God bless you. Yeah, you better play that 75 today, because <laughs> that's, that that, that's not the right age. But if you do that, 750, I was, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, my brother Bill. Goodness of gracious. <laughs> 75. God bless you. God bless you. I heard. <laughs> I'm trying to settle in the 57. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's trying to do. I can just put it out there. God is great. I enjoyed the service so far this morning. Thank you. And I heard you with my nephew in there, Antoine. Yeah, that's right. Your nephew was right here. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. He's he's good man. Good, good, good man. God is blessing him. Yes, he God is. God him. Yeah, and you keep on doing what you're doing. And Devin Al Taylor, he's really encouraging my nephew. Yes, God, yes. He's the kind of inspiration that, that, that we need. Yes, yes. Positive. So all these young men, you're yeah. the five, yeah, number yeah. one. Walk in the right way. Uh-huh. Walk in the Thank you, my sister, for joining us this morning. God bless your heart. Uh-huh. Stand by the pastor-elect of Church of the Meek. Reverend A. Sterling Hawkins is going to join us in about uh, four minutes. Line your phone calls up. Get ready to talk to them. Uh-oh. There goes the video. Phone's ringing already. Look at that. Good morning. You're on the air. And peace and blessings, Brother Bill, Brother Smiley. Good morning, family. Good morning. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Sister Betty Jean, I know you don't like that. <laughs> but Brother Bill, Sister Betty Jean, she's going to tell it like it is. She's going to say it like it is. Yeah, but that, that's 75. You know, you better put that on. A, you better do something with that in the lotto you know store. Saying, right? You better you know do something saying, with right? that in the lotto but store. Anyway, listen, listen. <laughs> the Lord said be transformed. So I think you can own that. All right. She can have it right more than you know. 
I tell you what. I tell you what. Uh, my prayer is to make seventy five. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get to seventy. I'm trying to get to seventy five and be clothed in my right mind. You realize the, the fact Lord, how is important that is. Out of the mouth of babes, yeah. she has yeah. achieved that right. The things that she has gone through, That's she true. has overcome. She has overcome more obstacles than my life in its existence. That's true. She I has. will enjoy every word that comes out of her mouth. Yeah, no me matter too. how it sounds. <laughs> Blessings to that woman. Yes, she's, a, she's a great woman. Have a great day. Thank you, brother. Smiley. God bless <laughs> you, Lord. Seventy-five. <laughs> now watch, <laughs> watch what happens. See, see. <laughs> we talk about being clothed in your right mind. You know, you used to hear Grandma pray when she pray every morning. You know, she thank God for being clothed in her right mind. You know, with all the things going on, I don't know about your world, but all the things going on in my world, if it hadn't been for God protecting my mind, you might have went off last night. I woke up this morning, don't know who you were. But see what the Lord has done. Right back with our guest in. Oh, look at that. Less than two minutes. He'll be on. Got to tell somebody. And he saved me. Saved me right on time. When I was sick, thought I couldn't get well. He healed my body. And right now I can tell. Make me confused God gave me peace That ain't all He saved me Anybody here been saved I gotta tell somebody How the good Lord saved my soul God did it God did it God did it Right here on the 3G Experience, the gift, the grace, and the glory. Brother Bill, your highly trained broadcast specialist, performing my host duties flawlessly. Uh-huh, because I bring gravitas to gospel radio in New York, America, and with the advent of the Internet. The universe in a program designed to meet or exceed the listener's every expectation. As we break down the wall, the walls of ignorance and expand your horizons and broaden your vistas and open your eyes to see what the Lord has done. Don't touch that dial. Keep it locked on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. You're listening to WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Anybody else standing around? Make sure nobody else standing around. Uh, we, we got a, uh, well, all right, we'll do that a different way. I just got another text here. All this, you know, I, I got three computers, four computers to work with, so I need, I'm like an octopus, you know. And we're pleased to have in studio Reverend A. Sterling Hawkins, the pastor elect of the Church of the Meek on West 141st Street. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm just so glad to have you here this morning. Well, it's always a pleasure to be with you, Brother Bill. And uh, we just got a text in from uh, a sister I think you know from Throg's Neck Project. My sister, God, my God. Sister Melanie McCoy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back. <laughs> I ain't going to say how many years. Not, not, 75, <laughs> not 75 like you. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Melanie. She just said in here, uh, good morning. She says, when our circumstances don't change, it's often an indication that God is trying to change us. Mm -hmm. So, blessings and no stressing. 
Yes, all man. the way from Atlanta. Okay. God bless you, Melanie uh, McCoy. Uh -huh. I love you. I love you. I love you. Dewey Avenue forever. That's right. That's right. And you know, it's a funny thing. You know, uh, our paths, uh, our paths had to have crossed at some point because I was up there quite frequently. Wow. Uh, with Jimmy and uh, you know, her right. Father, I, you know, I, I was I up there with him and her and everybody. Wow. So uh, and when so when we met, we were talking one day. And she said, "Yeah, my little brother, little brother, little, little brother." <laughs> I, I looked the man in his eyes. He stayed silent. <laughs> Just me, little brother. So then she ran it down and said, oh, yes, yes. the world be getting smaller yeah, and smaller. Yeah, she was like a big sister, and that was back in the time where it took a village to raise a child, and Melanie will always be dear to my heart because of the things that she instilled in me down through the years, uh, uh, running up and down that hill called Dewey Hill. I know Fox it. Nick I, I, I know it well. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Yes, sir. What's the song say? Oh, how well do I remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. But it's real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 100. <laughs> so listen, this weekend is wow. a big weekend wow. in your life. Wow. Uh, after 20 years of uh, preaching, yes, sir. now you're going to uh, ascend, I call it, to the uh, uh, pastorhood. Yes, sir. Tell yes, us sir. about pastorate. Tell us about I tell you, I tell you, uh, it's been a joy Eight years almost pastoring, and the first uh, eight years, I say, from 2006, April 2006 up until uh, September of 2013, uh, was spent in a little place in Connecticut known know as that. Norwalk, Connecticut. Yeah, I know Norwalk. I'll always <laughs> be dear, that, that place will always be dear to me because that's where I started out. That's where the first church I passed it. The Mount Zion Baptist Church is located. And then the Lord took me on a venture that I never thought I would be on, and that was to organize a work. And that lasted for about a good four and a half years uh -huh. before I relinquished uh, the duties of that uh, work up in Connecticut, East Avenue in Norwalk, Connecticut. Then, Bill, it came to a point where I had to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, I knew my work was over okay. in Norwalk. And that's a thing that uh, some of us pastors have a hard time to deal with. Let's, it's just, a let's struggle. put a pin right there for a second. Now, yes, now, now I, at what point does one, or you, as you just said it, but does one realize that, you know, I, I, I can't, I, this, this, I can't do nothing else here? This, it's an inner more so than an outer you 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 don't pick it up with your physical eyes uh -huh, first uh -huh, uh -huh. because physically things look to be normal <laughs> yeah. you know they, everything's yeah. all right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but inwardly uh -huh. you your spirit tells you that your time is up i recall a sister uh and 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 I won't call her name. Uh, mm -hmm. She was a pastor uh, uh, in here, and then, and then she started the church here, and then was here, and then right. was here, and was here. And she said she felt like Paul. You know, she mm -hmm. just thought these churches mm -hmm. just around it. Mm -hmm. But there's a point where you can lead people, but so far. Exactly. You, th th there's a point that you get to where there is no, fr I can't teach them anymore. Right. I can't take them anywhere. One thousand percent. And, and, and I think that for me to stay here another hour. Right. Would, right. Be, would be a detriment to the mission. The exactly. Ultimate, the ultimate exactly. mission. Exactly. The mission is always bigger than the messenger. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we as uh, clergy should never get beyond the building, the church that God has built upon this rock. I built my yeah. church. Yeah. yeah. And the gates of hell shall right. not prevail right. against it. We should never think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, as Paul would say also. Yeah. And so it, it comes to a point where if you totally lean and depend on God like I had to, uh, uh, uh. you realize that your day is done. Yeah. And Lord, show me. Mm -hmm. How to navigate. Show me what you want me to do. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Where you want me to go. Right. Yeah, yeah. So September 29th came, 2013. Uh -huh. uh, the fine people at Friendly Missionary Baptist Church in Norwalk gave me a farewell service. And, uh, you know, it was teary-eyed uh, from members but and amicable. myself. Amicable. Uh -huh. you know, you oh, yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. Nobody, yeah. Nobody, nobody, no, angry, nobody no, angry. Nothing like that. Nothing yeah. like that. That's good. 
took me downstairs, fed me some food. I'm still here, so yeah. I didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank God for the journey up in Norwalk, Connecticut. And then the following weeks, up until December 14th, I was in somebody's pulpit, okay. but two Sundays. Uh, uh, and so the Lord was showing me there, little by little, that he still had his hand on me. Yes. Then, lo and behold, a great phone call came uh, December 14th, uh, around maybe 1.15 p.m. Dr. Carl Washington, uh, Jr., the moderator of the United Missionary Baptist Association, uh -huh. was on the other end of the phone, and uh, he had the phone on speaker, and uh, the vote had taken place at Church of the Meek, 305 West 141st Street, right. and they were there, and they announced me as the pastor-elect. Great. Asked me the question, when could I be there? Now, that was <laughs> December 14th. I said, I'll be there tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't take nothing fact, from my journey fact, now. Oh, yes, sir. Fact, in fact, I recall uh, uh, that Sunday. Mm -hmm. You preached that Sunday. That, that I preached in the morning. Then yeah. I had to preach for the preacher that couldn't make, I believe it was the Usher's anniversary, uh -huh. annual day for uh -huh. the Usher's. Uh -huh. And I preached that afternoon. Yeah. Too. And yeah, so uh, it was a beautiful thing. Sure. Well, that's good. That's good. And uh, uh, as far as the uh, church structure, what ministries uh, did you inherit, and then what, what other ones will you look to add? The thing about it, it when you, if you have any sense as a pastor, you uh, basically observe sure. when you when you get there. You don't go in there uh, like a bull in a china shop changing stuff. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, you yeah. don't do that. It's the quickest way to become an enemy yeah. um, or I, an ex pastor. Exactly, ex -pastor. <laughs> former pastor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I came with what the Lord gave me. Okay. Simply a vision of in reach outreach and upreach uh -huh. and if you look at that uh, internally you'll see that that's always ongoing in Constantly. any church in positive continuum a, a continual continual yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we're always trying to embrace each other with our uh, inward relationships and also dealing with the physical structure that the Lord gave us at 305 uh, to uh, renovate that as time goes on. That's in reach. And then outreach, we're, of course, uh, dealing with the community and the ills of, of what's out there. And then upreach, we're always dealing with a relationship. Or how's, trying. Your, how's, how's your French? Uh, French? My French is good. Good, because you, know <laughs> you know why I ask you that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> good morning here on the air. Good morning. I'm calling to give a shout out to Church of the Meek and my newly elected pastor. He's right here. Reverend Sterling Hawkins. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Who's calling in from where? This is Evangelist Brown from Church of the Meek. Yeah, God there she is. That's that sweet lady Caroline. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, Neil Diamond made a song. Sweet Caroline. Sweet yeah, Caroline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I, you know, I've been through church every week once or twice. I, I know it's a great church. It is. It is a great church. Okay. So, well, so. we look forward to seeing you time and time again and hearing from you as well. Well, yeah, I'll get by there again. I also want to see you on the twenty fourth of May as well. Okay. Right. Praise the Lord. Uh, We're gonna be there to support that. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you there. And so, listen. Uh, uh, how are the members excited about their new pastor? Yes, we are. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to step out on the limb and say, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, God is good. Because one of the most difficult things to do is to come in behind exactly. another popular, exactly. uh, uh, well-suited pastor. And Reverend know. James R. Nearly, I God knew him bless well. his soul, no, yeah. great spirit throughout not only uh, the west side of Harlem, but throughout uh, the state of New York and abroad touch many hearts and mm -hmm. um you know you just don't come in and erase nothing like that no and all I, you can I, do is build on exactly and, 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 and add little here and exactly there. thank exactly. you my sister for joining us this morning thank you for having us god bless your heart god yeah bless. yeah that, that, that's oh you, yeah you, you, oh yeah Again, if not, it's a suicide mission. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. Reverend Neely was the one that uh, over 10 years ago, he gave me and another group of uh, young ministers chance to come by. Uh, Reverend James Willie, Reverend Jeffrey Crenshaw, Kren Reverend sure. Kevin Qualls. And all we, of his pastors we, we, now. Exactly. Crenshaw, we, we Qualls, were all of, Exactly. We Cren were all in the Associate Ministers sure. Division of UMBA at the same okay. time. Okay. And it was people like Reverend James R. Neely that gave us an opportunity to come by on Sunday afternoons and some Sunday mornings. Okay. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Brother Bill. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Who's calling it's in from where? 
It's Liverette from Tabernacle Deliverance. Good That's morning, my sister. Talking. How your eyes? How how you feeling this morning? Uh, very good this morning, thank you. I know you have had had, had a little work done. Yeah. Yes, it came out very well. Good. I go back tomorrow for a checkup, but she said I have two good eyes now. Okay, okay. So I'll, okay. I'll, I'll be able to see naturally as well as spiritually. Yeah, yeah. And I got the spiritual, I know that. Uh-huh. And God bless the, the new preacher at me. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Uh, Pray for me. I, I tell my children when you say following people's footsteps, my children can't follow in my footsteps because my feet is bigger than theirs. Yeah. Right. So, but we just give a little trail from the walk beside. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're falling beside a great man. Yes, ma'am. Brother yes, Neely, ma'am. that was my son since he was born. Wow. His mother gave birth to him, but that was my baby. Wow. He was my uh, music director in my Broadway show mm-hmm. for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I have to love you, too, like I loved him. Bless you, ma'am. I would love to see you face to face one day. I'm never read. Ask anybody in the church. Hey, do you know Leverett? No. Black, black, black velvet and beautiful. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just about it. When I walk in, the it's black old. thing in the church, but the fine is just, oh, that's Leverett. That's uh, <laughs> world famous. World famous. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll be seeing you at Mr. Bill's. Yeah, we'll be there. And also at my pastor's. Um, that's right. Banquet. Who's He's your pastor? 37 Joe years. Wright. Pastor Joseph. Oh, Wright. yeah, 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 yeah. Had Captain privilege to preach in the wintertime, matter of fact. I preached for the 500 men in bow ties, sir. Service for uh, Abba. Yes, ma'am. Yep. That's what what, what, what's the, what's the uh, Pastor Bright's date? April 24th, isn't it? Yes, April 24th. Yeah. Okay. Please, yeah. please well, keep us Saturday, posted. Send us correspondence April. to uh, Church of the Meek. Where will it be? Huh? Where's it going to be? Uh, Alhambra. At the Alhambra on 26th okay, Street. Okay, yeah. we, we, we will get you that letter out today. Thank you, ma'am. I'll call Pastor right now. God All right. And, uh, and if he wants to, he, you know, he's always welcome to call. Because we always fellowship with Meek. That's Beautiful. Right. Let's get our fellowship started. Now, we're not going to break that up. No, 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 no. No, we're okay, going to keep it going. I'll be speaking to you, and I'll be seeing you on Sunday. Pray for me, ma'am. We'll do, darling. God bless, bless your heart. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Brother Bill. This is Sister Bird. Yes, we are happy about our pastor. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Burke. One of the sweetest <laughs> ushers I ever, ever, ever I, met. I know Sister Burke. How yes, you doing, Sister? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That's my that's my usher. Uh, yeah, we are so excited. <laughs> I'm going to get yeah. by there Sunday afternoon uh, to you know witness this great event, and uh, uh, thank you for supporting Reverend Hawkins as well. And uh, y'all take care of him over there now. Oh. We will. All right. We will. All God right. bless you, Sister Thank Berg. You. Love Thank you. God bless you all. Y'all have a good day. Thank now. you. you good too, morning. Man. You're on the air. Good morning, Brother Bill. This is Ruby Glover. Good How morning, are? my sister. Another How tabernacle are? delivered sister wow. on there this morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. First of all, I got to um, correct Liverett. The birthday is on the 26th. 26th. I'm sorry. I'm the 24th. That's, the 24th. That's right. The 26th. Yeah. Okay. April 26th. I want to say to you is that. We have a conference going on in the tabernacle today and tomorrow. And I would like for all those who can stop by to see what's going on. It's on the stronghold. All of them are looking for the stronghold. What time? It started 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, okay. And then again, 7.30 at night. All right. All right. We'll pass by there on the way out of here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, my sister. And an early happy birthday, too. <laughs> Thank you, April 4th. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for remembering. Uh, 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 and just like uh, you tell uh, Betty Jean, I ain't going to be 75. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. God bless your heart. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I'm calling to to recognize my pastor-elect, Pastor Hawkins, that's on the radio this that's morning. That's LaShonda Denny Scott, I bet. Yes. Um, that's three people or one person? Now that's one person. <laughs> that's one. She has the same name as my wife, Brother Bill, LaShonda. That's, that's right. right. That's yes. right. So that's you right. know she's that's special. Right. Yes. Yeah. And just, just, just looking to God that I know that He's making a change and there's going to be a shift in the air. Come bless Sunday you. morning. Bless you. Bless you. Bless. You know, Bill, I was pleasured to uh, baptize the first person I baptized at Meek was LaShonda's daughter. Is that right? Uh, Darylin, and guess when her birthday is? I could never. February 23rd. 
That's Gee. a great. That's a great day, brother Bill. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Along with April Fourth. <laughs> I ain't gonna let y'all get okay. <laughs> love, love you, Lashonda. Love you, love you, love, love you. Love you too, Pastor. Love you too, and have a blessed day. You too, nine. Thank y'all you for listening. Stay prayed up, and okay, thank you for calling. I will. Oh. Now listen, listen, Lashonda. Yes. Don't just be on here because he's on here. Oh no, 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 no! I listen to this channel on in the mornings. I all see. The time. Well, well, make sure you hear. I didn't ask for nobody. I said because you hear. Okay, okay. Thank you. God bless your heart. God bless you too. All right, all right. We'll be uh, right back with uh, Pastor Hawkins after this important message. Yes. It's not always easy being a dad. When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. What? What do you mean she's not coming? But it's always worth it. It's a fairy princess! It is I! Cruz! Zinkle Bell! Yeah! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Divas Beauty Salon has moved. Divas Beauty Salon, a team of professional Dominican hairstylists with more than 10 years of experience in Harlem, has moved to the Bronx. Recently renovated for your convenience and better service, the salon offers a full range of services, including wash and sets, wash and blow dry, relaxers with deep conditioning, touch-ups, semi and permanent color, haircuts, and more. Divas Beauty Salon, located at 670 East 161st Street, between Codwell and Trinity Avenues in the Bronx. Open seven days a week for your convenience, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, call 718-292-0055. That's 718-292-0055. Remember, at Divas Beauty Salon, we value your time. We're not here to waste it. The world-famous Apollo Theater, in partnership with World Music Institute, presents Africa Now on Saturday, April 5th at 8 p.m. Africa Now, hosted by Wumi, featuring performances by Le Frère Guisse, the Sierra Leone Refugee All-Stars, and Fatumata Diawara. That's Africa Now, Saturday, April 5th at 8 p.m. at the world-famous Apollo Theater. For complete information on this and other Africa Now Festival events, including Family Showtime and Apollo Music Cafe performances, visit www.apollotheater.org. Right here on the 3G Experience, the gift, the grace, and the glory. We're so honored to have... Uh, Pastor-elect Reverend A. Sterling Hawkins with us, and uh, let's see. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. This is Reverend Denny Brown. I'm calling to give my pastor a shout-out, my pastor-elect Reverend Hawkins, which will be installed on Sunday, and we are so excited about it. Love you, sure. love you, love you, love you, love you, Reverend. Who's, uh, who's installing you? Uh, my father in ministry, my father in ministry, Dr. James Edward Wilson, Jr., First Union Baptist Church, Bronx, Bronx. New York. Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. He'll be doing the 4 o'clock installation. Dr. Uh, Carl Washington uh -huh. will be doing the 11 o'clock uh, okay. service. And uh, I'm just blessed to have people like, uh, I call her by her first name, Chiquita. That's right. She's a, we, were, we, were associate, Bill, we were associates together uh -huh. Uh -huh. in the mm -hmm. same associate minister division. Uh -huh. And so she'll always be near and dear to me. Matter of fact, when I knew that there was some sort of interest from Church of the Meek, she was the one that I got the phone number to call. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She has always been solid. In Let me ask you a question, uh, Chiquita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, what was what was it about uh, Reverend Hawkins that uh, uh, made you feel that he'd be a good uh, uh, pastor, if you will, for 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 Church of the Meek? Out of all the candidates that came through there, I know a whole lot of them came through there. Uh, yes, uh, yes, they did. What, 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 made him, what made him different than the rest? He, of, I won't dare say better. He, he what made him out, different? Uh, from among the others, he he had a strong spirit about him. Mm -hmm. He he was full of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and then he had such leadership um, authority, like in his voice. 
you know, like, uh, he had a vision. He had a vision, and he didn't mind sharing it. And when he shared his vision, then I saw the vision, and I knew that me could go further with him. Okay. That's, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Well, you see, you have to understand one thing. See, here I go. One thing about those of us that are former military men. Oh, yeah. There's a certain thing, all right, right that, that, that we have had to learn and then develop and then move on to the next phase of our lives. Exactly. And so our, our, our prior military training, you mentioned Marine Corps, well, that says a whole lot. Uh, that tells me a whole bunch of things. Uh, and I ain't going into all of them right now. But uh, being an Army man, you see, I was a captain in the United States Army. You okay. See. You uh, got some Fort Bragg in you then. Oh, yeah, Bragg, Benning, uh, uh -huh, all of that, you uh -huh. know. Uh, yeah. I wonder who that is. Anyway, but, uh, but thank you, my sister, for joining us this morning. But uh, uh, see, they're, they're, this is one of the things that I find uh, lacking, even in our uh, police. Mm -hmm. See, when 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 it was required that you had to have military background oh, yeah. to be a police officer in oh, the yeah. city, uh, cops were different. I won't say better. I say different. Right. A lot of these young men and women out here now have no. Wear, they don't know how to wear a uniform. Exactly. You know, exactly. And let alone have any kind of posture or presence because there's a time to just, just the officer just standing there. Exactly. Was in a now is he standing? He's slouching. Exactly. He's, you know, leaning against exactly. the wall. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Uh, you know, so it's really. Uh, Bill, been, I think what you're getting at is the word that you don't hear used in society known as bearing. Yes. B E A R I N G. Yes. Bearing. Yes. And, and, and tact. Yes. T A C T. You don't hear those words used no. in, in, in Civilization and and and, and finesse exactly. and also uh, self worth right you right see, those are things that that that, that, that we, we had to, we had to have in military exactly. one and then those of us that came through the church at a certain period of time a certain period of time found it there as well sixties so, seventies so it, it, it was just augmented exactly you see I'll never forget my first pastor Reverend Doctor Charles Britt from Barnwell Britt? So, you remember him. Sure. There's still a lot of a lot of ministers and people around that remember Dr. Britt, mm -hmm. and uh, he was one of of little uh, formal education, mm -hmm. but what you call mother wit and full of the Holy Ghost. That helped. <laughs> he all, oh, and then just looking at Reverend yeah, Britt, yeah, you yeah. were scared. You look down there, you look at the, the preacher there. They used to call him, they were mean, like McKenzie. And, right, and, right, right. And kitchen, Gardner. Kitchen. And, Gardner. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. And them, John uh, P. Ladson. Ladson as well. Yes, Although sir. Ladson was short, so he right. wasn't that bad. With the Monroe <laughs> Walls. Right, 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 uh, right. Uh, uh, 115th Street. Over there, Memorial. Watts, Herman Watts. Watts, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, Memorial, before of Washington. Okay, okay, you got me there. Yeah, okay, but anyway, him. You predating uh, yourself, Bill. Uh, uh, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting that Sydney. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, uh, sir. Monroe. Remember Monroe's church? They used to call it the Ice Tees Preston before he died. Oh, okay. Uh, that was, uh, how you doing over there in Monroe's church? He uh -huh. said, oh, fine, thank you. <laughs> 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 he wasn't going to mess with that. Yes, Same sir. thing when. Uh, 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 Adolph Roberts went into uh, uh, Monroe Walls Church. That's okay, Monroe Walls Church. Okay, uh, okay. I remember look, I was the chairman of the deacon board at St. Matthew's. With wow, Doctor Sass. Okay, you see, okay. so I had to okay. run went with him everywhere he went. So yeah. I was yeah. moving with the same preachers and them. Wow, things are so different now. So you know, different. You know, so different. Uh, so different. I would say I'm a drawback from uh, a throwback, whatever you want, whatever uh -huh. terminology you want to use. Uh, to the old school sure. Charles Brits. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I see in loving people uh -huh. and being firm yeah. in your preaching and your teaching. No nonsense when it comes to preaching and teaching. Okay, consistency. Consistency yeah. is, is definitely uh, important. Definitely important in the Let's pulpit. go back to the music. 39 minutes past the hour. We'll be right back with our guest this morning, the pastor elect of Church of the Meek. Uh, I don't know why I did that. That was kind of dumb. Uh, 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 I'm just watching something now, y'all. Y'all, y'all are watching. Oh, they can see us, you know. They can see us. Yeah. Right wow. We're on the internet. Yeah, we're streaming live. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, that, God that, bless that, you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this thing is up there, but anyway. All right, right back to, with the 3G experience, the gift, the grace, and the glory. Brother Bill here, doing my thing for nobody but you, and certainly because of no one but you, Timothy Wright. David Wright and the choir. Our own Jake Langley up front. On the 3G experience here on your favorite radio station, 
WHCR 90.3 on the FM. Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning. I would like to give a shout out to Pastor Hawkins from Church of the Me. God bless you. God bless you. Who is this? Sister Cornelius Jabby. Oh, this is Beatrice. Beatrice. Yes. Now, yes. now, Bill, let me. There's a story behind okay. Be- Beatrice Cornelius Jabby. We used to say Beatrice. Uh, no, 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 no. no. She, she, I, I'll say Beatrice. Okay. I'll say Beatrice. Okay. She <laughs> goes back to that great choir, a young adult choir, uh-huh. and that was pastored by Reverend Charles Britt. Oh, yeah. back okay. in the, back in the mid to er, mid seventies, I remember yeah. a young lady with long black hair uh-huh. beyond her shoulders. What color is it now? It's still black. Okay, you ain't gonna get me in trouble, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Be- Beatrice, wherever she has gone, and uh, I, and I, uh, from what I uh, from what I know, it's just been great design in Church of the Meek. She has been an integral part to both churches. I mean, she's a mover and a shaker, uh-huh. and uh, she's not one that'll stand around and run her mouth. She's about action. Okay. And I love yeah. you. I love you, Beatrice. I love you from I the bottom of my too. heart. Thank you, thank you, I th- and God bless you. God bless you, and we'll see you on Saturday. I don't know if I'm gonna come by on Saturday, but I'll see you on Sunday. All right. I okay, love you. Take care. I love you. All right. You. I love you. Okay.
We want to thank our pastor-elect, Reverend A. Sterling Hawkins, for being with us this morning. And uh, we're all looking forward to uh, Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be a great day up there at Church of the Meek, a church I know very well. Right back after these announcements. The Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT of New York City, provides assistance in preparing and recovering from emergencies. CERT assists first responders and provides staffing for city shelters in response to disasters and extreme weather conditions. City College is one of the many locations for hurricane evacuation. CERT team members are local and live amongst the community, so they are always there for the people. CERT members will speak to any organization about emergency planning for the elderly, children, and the disabled. They offer workshops in creating go bags, emergency communication, and evacuation plans, and shelter in place kits. To learn how to prepare for emergencies, call South Harlem CERT at 917-406-6661. I started going cold turkey. Well, at least when I'm in the car. I know I shouldn't do it, but it's so hard to stop. That's why I hide it from myself, so I won't be tempted. I used to do it all the time. I stopped by locking it in my glove compartment. My friend used to do it way too much. Now I turn it off when we're in the car. My solution is simple. I just don't do it. There are lots of ways to stop yourself and others from texting and driving. How will you stop? Tell us at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We know, you know, one of the things that we need to do is to get off them phones anyway, okay? Uh, uh, and I'm guilty of it, too, to a point. I, I don't text and drive. I, I will, uh, uh, I have pulled the car over uh, to answer a text if I felt it was important. Now, 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 what texts do I think are important, which I ain't telling you? But nonetheless, uh, some texts I do uh, respond to right away, and others I don't. Uh period. I certainly don't text and drive. Uh, but let's try something. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let me throw this out there to you. 48 minutes past the hour. Why don't we, in our homes, in our homes, pick a moment, dinner, uh, before dinner, and put all the phones, because everybody got one, Put all the phones in another room, like in the bedroom or in the other bedroom or in the bathroom or somewhere, and put everybody's phone in there. Turn them off. Put everybody's phone in that room, and y'all sit down in a room uh, over dinner table. Will be fine, and try to talk for a half hour. Try to hold a half hour conversation, and let's see what happens. I, 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 I wrote that in my article in Harlem News, by the way. You read Harlem News? Yeah, you ought to read Harlem News. I have an article in there uh, every week. Uh, and in, in, in this week's article, I propose that, that we take a, a, a period of time, whatever, be it breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, pick a time, and put those phones away, okay, so they're not even in sight, all right? And, and see if you can sit down with your group, whatever it is, uh, family, uh, friends, whatever, for one half hour and just talk. Everybody's texting, nobody talking, everybody's texting, walking down the street, texting, walking down the street, talking, getting on the bus or the subway, talking, talking, walk. I thought somebody was talking to themselves one day, they was talking on the phone. I think this is going a little bit too far, personally. I think we need to kind of uh uh, dial this back just a little bit. I understand the, I was just talking to Reverend Hawkins about the importance of uh, 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 media, the importance of devices and computers and stuff. Uh, but I think we've gone a little bit too far to the point that we don't talk anymore. I, I've seen couples sitting in a car. He's texting, she's texting. Not to each other, but different folk. Or he's talking and she's talking, or she's talking and he's talking. Nobody's talking to each other anymore. Okay? And our communication skills are getting horrible. You got strong thumbs, but, <laughs> but lousy communication skills. Huh. Let's see what happens behind that. 51 minutes past the hour here on the 3G experience. Don't forget, 
uh, April 26th at the Alhebra uh, Hall. Oh, yeah, it's a hall. Alhambra Hall, 126th Street, and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard will be celebrating the 80th birthday of my best friend, Reverend Joseph T. Bright. That's right. April 26th. We made a mistake and said April 24th. Actually, it's April 26th. And then following that, because the pastor comes first, following that, May 24th will be my appreciation day also at Tabernacle of Deliverance. And also today, uh, come on by Tabernacle, Sister Ruby Glover and them up there. Come on by from 10 o'clock to 7 o'clock tonight. Come on by Tabernacle. Good place to be. And it's so convenient to get to Tabernacle. The bus and it's flat ground. That's right. So you don't have to walk up no hill or down no stairs and nothing to get there, right? Right. Clarence Thompson, Boston, Massachusetts sound. 99 and a half. Shaman. Right here on the 3G experience. The gift, the grace, the glory. Brother Bill, doing my thing for nobody but you.
Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. How are you, sir? This fine. Thank you. Who's calling in from where? This is Deacon Farrell. And this this is Deacon S. Farrell. Hello. The Church of the Meek. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, first of all, your pastor just walked out the door, oh, but we're glad okay. that you called in to say hello, and uh, we're, 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 it sounds like y'all are real, real, real happy. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. We've been, we've been in the vineyard about two years working on this, man, but God is, uh, he's, he's good, man. Believe me. Yeah, I, I, you ain't got to convince me. You know. I, know you, I know I don't. I know but, I but, uh, uh, all you were playing was out of sight, too. Oh, you like that? Uh, I do, yeah. 99 and a half won't do. 99 and a half won't do. Yeah, so make sure you join us next Thursday, too. Don't just be here because he was here. No, but see, the thing's so unfortunate about this situation. I live out in Queens, and I can't get it. On the Internet. On the internet. www.whcr.org. Let me write this down. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. Just one. Sure will. Okay, that again. www.whcr. Okay. .org. Okay. And we're here every Thursday from 6 to 10. There's other folks on during the rest of the week, but uh, uh, I'm concerned about Thursday mornings. <laughs> very good. Okay. Well, Thank we you. We appreciate that so very much, and it was so nice talking with you. Yes. Look forward to I you see you. the work that you are doing. Thank you. See you Sunday afternoon. Oh, okay. God All bless right. your heart. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Brother Bill. This is the from my Good morning. How are you feeling this morning? I'm blessed. I would like to thank all the WACR listeners for their prayers and my recovery. My you ready to run the Olympics now, right? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but I will be soon. I know you're real. I, I will be soon. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. But everything else is working well? Everything else is working well. Thank God for that. Good, yeah. good, good. We're going to see you. We, yes. we know you're going to be all right on the 24th of May. We'll get well, you up I'm going to try to. I just heard the 24th of May. Well, if I got to send a vehicle to get you, you're going to be there. <laughs> okay, I certainly will. Now, so you be dressed and ready to go. And I'll send the vehicle to get you to bring you up there. Will do. You and will the whole. Do, you and, you and the whole. You get there on both feet. I will get there myself. Well, okay. if you walk, if you walk slow, straight up Eighth Avenue, and it's all That's flat, right. and it's all flat <laughs> ground. Not that so. far. Yeah, and it's Not all flat. Uh huh. Thank yes. you, my sister. So glad okay, you're feeling darling, better. Okay, darling. Be blessed, and God love you, and so do I. See you soon. Okay, baby. God bless your heart. I bless you too. Other place I'd rather be than in the presence of the Lord. Oh, how I long to be where worry and care see. Highest mountain cannot compare. All I know is I've got. 
Louisiana sound of a new sister, uh, Gail Fly, her name is, and she's from uh, Louisiana, uh, New Orleans. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got uh, family history down in New Orleans myself. I even got a street with my name on it down there. Sure do. And every chance I get, I go down there and walk down my street. <laughs> and by the same token, uh, April 28th, uh, is Brother Bill Day. That's right. Congressman Rangel said that uh, hear it from henceforth and forevermore uh, that April 28th would be Brother Bill Day and it should be celebrated with appropriate honors. So I'm going to walk down 7th Avenue uh, <laughs> with a drum <laughs> and celebrate Brother Bill Day in preparation of May 24th when we're all going to be at Tabernacle of Deliverance having a good time on that day. Larry Brooks and the New Zion Travelers. We're looking for all our groups to come out too on uh, the 24th. Uh huh. Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, I'm come calling because I want to give a shout out to my pastor, Reverend Hawkins from the Church of the Meek. He just left. He just he got, he got another appointment, oh. but I'm so glad that you called. And uh, so tell me, tell me one thing about Reverend Hawkins you like. Reverend Hawkins is down to earth. He's, he keeps it 100. He keeps it 100 all day long, and I love that about him. 
Okay, that's good because it, it, it's important that that that. You have that consistency, you know. He's, yes, he's, yes, and he is that. He is yes. that. Well, I, he is I, that. He's been that way as long as I've known him, so uh, no sense wow. in changing. No sense in changing now, right? <laughs> exactly. Don't need to change now. Sure, sure. Well, that's good. I'm so happy for you and happy with you. Thank and, you. And uh, I'm going to come by there uh, Sunday afternoon and try to okay. catch some of that uh, celebrating y'all doing. Now, I got one more thing to ask you. Don't you be here just because he was here. Oh. Say that again? Don't be here on the station just because he was he was here. No. No. I want no. you here next Thursday too. Oh no problem. No problem. Okay. No problem. That's good. We try to expand our family of listeners, you see. And that's what we, that's what we it's all about working together. That's no right. Problem. And uh, uh I gave Pastor some uh, flyers for my appreciation service on the twenty fourth of May. Okay. And he told me that uh, the Church of the Meek will be well represented there on that day. That means you too. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. And you are again I'll tell him that you called. Shawnee. Shawnee? Yeah. All right, Shawnee. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come there Sunday afternoon looking just for you. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. God Go bless your heart. Day. Thank you for listening and thank you for calling WHCR ninety eight point three on the FM. Now move to brand new music. Some more new music I got for you from the McDonald Sisters from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I feel kind of country right about now. I don't know why. I just feel kind of country. Uh, and this from a CD tagged live in Conway, South Carolina. That's where Sister Rosa James is, uh, was, is. <laughs> 